Okay. Um, so my name is Meg Whitman. I'm the United States Ambassador to Kenya and uh, the great class of 1979. <laughs> and then I um, ran HP Hewlett Packard Company for eight years. Um, and was minding my own business when the President of the United States called me and said, we'd like you to be an ambassador and we want you to go to Kenya. And I said, Kenya? I was thinking France. <laughs> but he said, no, I want you to go to Kenya because Kenya is the tech capital of um, East Africa, would be the tech capital of all of the continent. And um, it's been a, a remarkable chapter in our lives because for us now, this is about experiences. So I have been privileged to be here for the last two years. As you now know, Kenya is a remarkable country. Presentation called Why Africa, Why Kenya? Why should you invest in Africa? And why CEO for eight years had 100% of our supply chain in China three years ago. That's a very dangerous proposition because you, you, know, you never know what will happen. So supply chain diversification and think about the future. And the future is here. The future is here. We intend to make it 100% in the next seven years. Kenya will all be green energy. 40% of the world's workforce will come from this continent by 2050. We are determined to make sure that this continent becomes that continent of the future. Good professor, thank you very much for making it possible for these great people to visit our continent. And just to assure you that we are weaving a new narrative, a narrative that speaks to the reality of what this continent is about. All stories glorified the hunter. We're beginning to write our own story. We've begun to write our own story. Many people have written stories about us for a long time. We've learned how to write our own story. We can do this together. It's no longer going to be the North versus the South. I think that adversarial uh, engagement is no longer unnecessary. We've made a decision ourselves that we're going to be part of the solution. We're going to provide, you know, our own ideas, our own thoughts, and inform what ultimately becomes global solutions. And my mission was to bring Harvard into Africa and to bring Africa into Harvard. And I designed the first two courses on Africa and now we have a course called Global Immersion in which the students are trying to do three things. One, we're trying to teach them leadership. Secondly, we're trying to teach them teamwork. Three, we are trying to teach them to understand leadership in the context of a different continent. Uh, Mr. President, I graduated from Harvard Business School in 1980. I look much, I am indeed, four are in Africa. The four selected for Africa are Kenya, Rwanda, Morocco, and Ghana. <laughs> During their time here, they have been attached to a number of Kenyan companies. Naivas, Coco, Prudential, any student at random. And on that basis, in the spirit of HBS, is Mohammed here? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Mr. President, uh, Ambassador Whitman. Okay. Um, so, my name is Meg Whitman. I'm the United States Ambassador to Kenya and uh, the great class of 1979. <laughs> and then I um, ran HP Hewlett Packard Company for eight years um, and was minding my own business when the President of the United States called me and said, we'd like you to be an ambassador and we want you to go to Kenya. And I said, Kenya? I was thinking France. 
But he said, no, I want you to go to Kenya because Kenya is the tech capital of um, East Africa, would be the tech capital of all of the continent. And um, it's been a, a remarkable chapter in our lives because for us now, this is about experiences. So I have been privileged to be here for the last two years. As you now know, Kenya is a remarkable country. Presentation called Why Africa, Why Kenya? Why should you invest in Africa? And why CEO for eight years had 100% of our supply chain in China three years ago. That's a very dangerous proposition because you, you, know, you never know what will happen. So supply chain diversification, and my mission was to bring Harvard into Africa and to bring Africa into Harvard. And I designed the first two courses on Africa and now we have a course called Global Immersion in which the students are trying to do three things. One, we're trying to teach them leadership. Secondly, we're trying to teach them teamwork. Three, we are trying to teach them to understand leadership in the context of a different continent. Uh, Mr. President, I graduated from Harvard Business School in 1980. I look much, I am indeed, four are in Africa. The four selected for Africa are Kenya, Rwanda, Morocco, and Ghana. <laughs> During their time here, they have been attached to a number of Kenyan companies. Naivas, Coco, Prudential, any student at random. And on that basis, in the spirit of HBS, is Mohammed here? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Mr. President, uh, Ambassador Whitman. For Aidan Mohammed to just give some remarks as we begin. Welcome, sir. Okay, um, so my name is Meg Whitman. I'm the United States Ambassador to Kenya and uh, the great class of 1979. <laughs> and then I um, ran HP Hewlett Packard Company for eight years um, and was minding my own business when the President of the United States called me and said, we'd like you to be an ambassador and we want you to go to Kenya. And I said, Kenya? I was thinking France. But he said, no, I want you to go to Kenya because Kenya is the tech capital of um, East Africa, would be the tech capital of all of the continent. And um, it's been a, a remarkable chapter in our lives because for us now, this is about experiences. So I have been privileged to be here for the last two years. As you now know, Kenya is a remarkable country. Presentation called Why Africa, Why Kenya? Why should you invest in Africa? And why CEO for eight years had 100% of our supply chain in China three years ago. That's a very dangerous proposition because you, you, know, you never know what will happen. So supply chain diversification. And Think about the future. And the future is here. The future is here. We intend to make it 100% in the next seven years. Kenya will all be green energy. 40% of the world's workforce will come from this continent by 2050. We are determined to make sure that this continent becomes that continent of the future. Good professor, thank you very much for making it possible for these great people to visit our continent. And just to assure you that we are weaving a new narrative a narrative that speaks to the reality of what this continent is about. All stories glorified the hunter. We're beginning to write our own story. We've begun to write our own story. Many people have written stories about us for a long time. We've learned how to write our own story. We can do this together. It's no longer going to be the North versus the South. I think that adversarial uh, engagement is no longer necessary. We've made a decision ourselves that we're going to be part of the solution. We're going to provide you know, our own ideas 
our own thoughts, and inform what ultimately becomes global solutions. Our uh, exchange rate has stabilized. It had gone all the way to 167. It's come down to 130. Fuel had gone up. It's come down. Even to today, fuel has been announced again to come down. Our exchange rates, our interest rates are coming down. We're stabilizing the economy because of the measures that I have taken. I took the decision, for example, that we cannot continue to subsidize consumption. When I came into office, we were subsidizing fuel. We were subsidizing uh, uh, very rudimentary things. And we were spending 15 billion, that is close to $150 million every month. And we were going to sink the country, so I stopped. I mean, there was a complaint for a few weeks, and then people started to understand we need to make some hard decisions if we have to get the country moving in the right direction. I can tell you, a year ago, if there was an election, I would have been thrown out. But today, the situation has changed. And going into the future, those who are making noise at me, they will be the ones clapping. That's what it is. Every country pursues its interests. And when you pursue your interests, sometimes interests converge, either because of technology, or because of social issues, or because of history. And so, just like you had, um, like say, three years ago, her biggest space was in China. I don't know if she was still running eBay, whether that would be still be the case or she would be thinking differently. So it's the case. You know, we live in a very dynamic world and progressively you have to look at what are the national interests? Where, uh, where is technology going? How are your national interests ali aligned? There are values we believe in, for example, as, um, as a country. We are a proudly democratic country. We believe in the rule of law. We believe in government that has checks and balances. These are values that we share with many countries and we pursue. We also have economic interests. We have social interests, we have cultural ties. So it is informed by many aspects and, and that's what eventually uh, determines uh, where we want to go. As, uh, as, as someone would say, we want to be friends to all and an enemy to none. It's a very difficult thing to do especially in a polarized world where we are today. But uh, consistently we try to keep um, uh, the friends that share common interests and common values with. And um, uh, I must say, a country like China, we have a, 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 a robust relationship. There are things we work together uh, we, we have shared, for example, infrastructure issues with many other countries. As I told you, America is our number one trading partner. So sometimes you, when there is a quarrel between America and China, we don't know where to stand. But somehow we managed to forge ahead. But uh, I think we are aligned. We know what the future is supposed to look like. And going into the future, I think we, uh, we, we align ourselves with the people whom we share values with. We spend 30% of our budget on education. So it's, it's a very important sector. And why do we spend that amount of money? Number one, we have a young population. And if you have a young population, 
the most important aspect is to make sure that they are in school, they get a correct training, they get a correct knowledge. Number two, Kenya prides itself with having the best human capital. And that best human capital is sharpened through education, training, and knowledge. So we, we, we spend a lot of resources in that direction. It is the reason why this, uh, this time last year, we launched the Kenya Open University to expand space in our learning infrastructure. So technology is playing a very significant role in, in our education sector. We are spending resources on digital learning, digital training, and as I told you earlier, we've even changed the law on um, what we call constituency development fund so that we can deploy internet ICT hubs to the lowest locality in Kenya because we realize that education is good, but digital learning is going to have an edge. So, so that is the trajectory we, we are looking at. I know you have said something about retaining our human capital. That, that's very important to us. But you know, we have a youth bulge. And sometimes we have more human capital that we are ready to share. So as part of a strategy, we are signing 19 bilateral labor agreements. I think the last one that uh, we were working on is with Germany. Because they need our human capital. They are saying, can we share your human capital? And because um, we live in a global village, you know, we, we, we don't mind sharing our human capital with others. So, so long as um, it is properly structured, because I think um, as opposed to migration that is sometimes giving us a challenge in other areas, structured migration is a win-win for those countries that require human capital, labor, and those countries that have labor in excess. So, so that is the arrangement that we have. We have on one end investing in, our, in learning because it's important for us to sharpen our human capital for our own uh, progress. But we also realize that there is an opportunity for us to share our human capital with others.